Hello and welcome. I'm Jay from App Music Tutorials, and in this fifth Roland Zen Beats tutorial, you'll learn one of several methods for creating a song from the loops we constructed in the Zen Beats Loop Builder tutorial. If you want to follow along, I strongly encourage you to watch that video first, as it will give you some context and you'll learn some helpful tips as well. So with that out of the way, let's get started. All right, well, let's get this show on the road. And we're going to begin by going and opening a song. So open song. I actually created this app music hip hop song in the uh, Loop Builder tutorial. And if you happen to have been with us at that point, you can open up the song. If you weren't, then there should be a card popping up right about now that you can click on. It'll take you back to that tutorial. Uh, you'll be able to build the pieces that we've got incorporated into the song. And you'll learn a few um, tips and tricks and very helpful information along the way. Now, otherwise, you're welcome to stick around and uh, whatever you learn here, just apply to whatever you've got going in Zen Beats as far as your own projects are concerned. So at any rate, I'm going to open up the app Music Hip Hop Song. And here uh, is kind of where we left off from the last tutorial. So we've got three... Uh, drum loops, a couple sequencer synth loops, we've got the electro composer loops, and we've got a couple of just kind of freeform audio loops that we pulled out from Zen Beats archive. And uh, now, what do we do with this stuff? How do we actually convert this into a song? Because certainly I can perform back the tracks and play back the tracks, and we'll talk about performance recording at a later time. But in this tutorial, I want to talk about another method of creating songs from the Loop Builder, and that is to copy the loops from the Loop Builder into the timeline, and that's a workflow that I actually use and actually like about this particular system. It's kind of like Ableton in that regard, if you will. There's like a performance side of it where you build your loops, but then you've also got the timeline view, and I like that workflow. So uh, let's go ahead and copy over a loop. Well, before we do that, let's go ahead and change this classic hop drum pattern. Uh, it, it sounds a lot like classic hop three. Yeah, a lot like classic hop three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch out classic hop two for another drum kit. And to do that, we're going to double tap on classic hop two. And now let's just go up and tap on the Classic Hop 2 name, and we're going to look for Big Beat 9 and select that. And let's play that back, and you'll see how it kind of fits in. So it's got a very similar vibe. I like the, the hats there. And it kind of fits in, and it's not the same. You know, it's different. So now I've got three different rhythm components to... Uh, as far as percussion uh, to work through at my whim. I'm going to close up this window and I'm going to reset things here. You can see that we've got the Big Beat 9 loop out here. And let's save what we've done so far just to give it a quick save. And now here's where the fun begins. We get to take these loops and actually develop them into a song. So let's start by copying Big Beat 09. And to do that, just do a long press. And then you'll get a menu, and you're going to choose Copy from the menu. And now navigate over to the Timeline view. I'm going to reset the cursor back to zero. And I want to paste my drums so that they end up at zero. So um, I'm going to get my cursor right up next to this line here or my finger, depending, and I'm just going to do a long press here. And now I've got two options. Let's choose Paste Pattern. And there's our drum pattern. So let's play that back. So that's nice. Now let me reset that. And, and some of you may have your follow cursor set to on and it may look a little odd. Let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to open up my 
transport controls here and open the grid option. And I have the follow play cursor off for a reason, because I like to work um, in some situations with it turned off. If I turn it on, you'll see what happens here. And let me just start the playback. It, it kind of starts to move everything off the screen to the left. And even though the magnification is currently set to a state where I can actually see everything on screen, it still moves everything off the screen. So I'm going to go back to my grid and turn off that follow play cursor. So again, the behavior here is now it's going to be able to play through. And even as it gets through to the middle of the screen here, it's not going to start to sweep across. So at any rate, um, just a little tip there for you when you're working in this view. Now let's move on to our next loop. Let's copy over another loop, one of our sequencer synth loops. So let's go back over to the loop builder view. And um, I actually like the second one here that we created. If you remember, here is like a lower pattern. Kind of like an SOS Morse code kind of thing. And then we have this higher one here. And I think I like that one for our purposes here. So I'm going to actually do a long press once again. Copy. And then head on back over to the timeline view. And again, this is a sequencer synth loop, so I want to make sure I'm pasting it there. Because there is a possibility I can actually paste it in the wrong cell. So keep that in mind. Be cognizant of that. So to paste, I'm going to again do a long press right on the border here and choose Paste Pattern. And now here is my sequencer synth. And now we can play them back and see what they sound like. Cool. All right, let's go back to the Loop Builder view. And here we're going to choose an Electro Composer pattern. For this one, I actually do think I like this first one a lot more. Yeah, I like the first one better, so I'm going to long press on this one. Copy, flip on back over to the timeline view, another long press, paste, and there we are. Let's go ahead and grab an audio track as well from the loop builder view. And I'm going to grab flying. Again, I'm going to do a long press, copy, back over to timeline long press paste. Now there were other options there too that I'm not going to go into, but you saw that for the audio track there's a loop browser. So if I wanted to exchange or change out loops that are currently in a cell or I want to add something on the timeline here as an audio file from my library in ZenBeats, I can do that. Alright, so let's play this back and see what we've got cooking. Well, yeah, that kind of sounds like it would have maybe in Loop Builder view. But I actually have now the ability to be much more creative with this. So I'm going to actually copy this Sequencer Synth loop to another position. And again, just I'm going to do a long press, copy. And then I'm going to place the cursor here at measure 3. And again, do the long press, paste. I'm also going to pull out my uh, mute and solo functions by just kind of clicking right around in here underneath the audio meters and pull that out. So that way I can solo and mute different options. Another thing you might choose to do is down in the lower left, if you want to bring out the channel strip for further control, you can do that. And again, the, the item, the track you've got selected is going to be the channel strip that's selected. And then I've got the 
volume, the solo, the mute, the pan, uh, these options here. So what I'd like to do though, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the Electro Composer loop out so that it spans the four measures. And I want to actually start out the track with the flying audio file, but then have it kick into the big beat at a later time. So here's how I'm going to work that out. I'm going to just move the big beat to measure three. I'm also going to move my two audio files, or I should say my MIDI loops here, my MIDI clips at this point in the sequencer synth. I'm going to move those over too. And to grab these both up, I just press and drag to select them. And now I can just press, you know, hold and move these over all at once. So that's how you can do a multiple selection. Now I'm going to uh, close up here this loop the flying audio loop so that it plays back for two measures here. And then I'm going to pull out, oops, a little too far off there. I'm going to actually uh, continue to loop this Electro Composer out to the measure seven marker. And let's see what we get. So that's what we have thus far, and it sounds pretty good. And you can see where to go from here, I think. You can continue to take loops, add tracks, copy, paste, and you can go ahead and build your song creations using that copy-paste function. So I love that workflow. It's really, in my opinion, a very easy, very logical approach especially if you're a beat maker and you want to start off making beats and then apply those to a natural, maybe a longer arrangement. So I, I, again, I like that workflow quite a bit. But there are other ways to actually record your loops and we'll talk about those in another video. For now though, let's uh, save what we've done so far. And I'll click on my arrow button to do that or tap on it. And now let's suppose that I've gotten my song to the point where I want to output it and maybe share it with somebody. I want to share it with a contemporary to get their opinion or maybe so they can work on it or do something with it. So here, right next to the save button is the share button. And if we click on that, this is where we can go to create our mix. And when we mix it down, it's basically mixing this into a two track file, two track audio file. Now the default is a wave file. So this has the wave extension here. And I like waves, so I'm going to leave it set to that, but we do have some other options here. We have FLAC and we also have AUG. So FLAC is a lossless codec that allows for a smaller file size and high fidelity, uh, as is AUG. And AUG gives you some quality settings. I'm not quite sure why, if it's lossless, why they would need to do that, but <laughs> there they are. I'm gonna set that back to wave. And then I also can tell the system what to mix down. And in this case, I'm mixing down the entire song, but I can also mix down a loop region. So if there's just a section of a song I want to be able to output to a file, and that option is also possible. But again, I'm going to use the entire song option. Now, real-time render, with this selected, it means it's going to take as long as your song takes to play through to render the file. Uh, so I'm going to name this song, and you can probably name it what it is. I'm just going to add a V2 on this, and that's just my own coding there. And then I'm going to use the real-time render and choose Create Mix.
I'm going to save this to my iPad. And I have a specific place I like to put my music, and that is in a app called Audio Share. So I'm going to choose Audio Share as my save option and choose save. And you can place that file wherever you can get to it later on to review it. it says my mix was created successfully. Do I want to view my new mix? Sure. And this is where you go if you want to create a new song or to get access to your current songs, aka projects. But we're now in the My Mixes section. And I have a lot of mixes here, all right? But the one that I just got done mixing down using the real-time render is this At Music Hip Hop Song version 2. Let's hear what it sounds like. <laughs> Let's go back. And now I'm going to choose to render out the file without selecting the real-time render. Uh, first, I'm going to give this a little tag here, a V3. Turn off the real-time render, entire song, create mix. And you can see it's just rendering as it would render any other file. And again, I'm going to use Audio Share as my output. And I'll save that. And I am going to want to take a look at this right now. So here I've got the two side by side songs, one of them rendered using real time render, the other just rendered straight out with no real time. And truthfully, I can't even hear the difference. But that's just me. But now you've just seen and you've just learned how you can copy those loops from the Loop Builder view into the Timeline view, compose a song, and output the song into a two-track file. In our next video, we're going to take a look at how to record performances. So until then, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more quality tutorials, consider clicking the subscribe button. Thanks again.